<laughs> this one's got, I'm double cooking, so I got a brisket, two butts in each one. See how nice it's getting? See that's marinating? See that right there? It should be showing up anytime. Okay, we'll, we'll inspect them. You in the open as well as the invitation? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll give you an invitational sticker today, all right? Give them a little chicken wing there, what do you think? It just, all of a sudden, it just, uh, that's the way brisket will do, and, and your pork too. You'll be cooking along there, and you're right on, and then that rain come, and it changed my cooking time, and it, it just sped it up. This is like doing a steam engine. Don't lay the cilantro on the meat. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Hope we're done with that. Time to shut her down and get her done now. Oh, yeah. I do believe I'm going to be some good ones. I would say this one's ready. 195 degrees, Doc. The comments were fairly consistent. I think the scoring uh, might have been uh, close. This one's not quite done, but if they bend and the meat splits like that, that's how I know that it's done. The reality therapy is going to come this afternoon. Somebody's reality is going to be really great, and the rest of us are going to get therapy. And of course, if you win, that puts the icing on the cake. Gives me bragging rights for a year. This is the other Fat Larry. Two Fat Larrys were now, formed in uh, now one of our good luck uh, May of uh, 99. We won a qualifier in March, so I've been preparing for the Royal since March. Basically, we start getting ready right away. Start preparing for your next cook when you get home. I don't care if it's two months away. Get the list. Let's go over the list so we know what we got. Okay, I gotta give a the last uh, two nights are usually frantic nights as uh, far as well, do, uh oh, we forgot this, we forgot this, and uh, that's the reason why we we have these lists that we make. And, that's uh, his to-do list. Uh, so it's very seldom uh, we miss yeah. anything. We always take plenty of paper plates, paper towels, paper cups, lots of trash bags, lots of kitchen size bags, bungee cords, we salt. take the tent. We've got a lot of aprons, we always carry a broom and bug spray, got to have bleach and bleach mix. Got to have sauces for every one of the meats and rubs for every one of the meats and anything you're going to inject or marinate any of the meats in. We have two or three cutting boards, dish pans, dish rags. He has a variety of knives and a knife sharpener. Sharp, that's, that's one of the most important things is having a sharp knife. Have to have a lot of extension cords and lights. We have a water bucket and an ash bucket. We take a good uh, detergent like Dawn to get rid of the grease. Another good source of uh, cleaner is vinegar. Vinegar cleans uh, grease real good. He uses gloves, the plastic latex type, and he uses a cotton glove under that for heat. It's something uh, uh, I would always have with me as a camera, especially if you're first starting out. I don't know that we need to take pictures anymore, but uh, we've, we've done enough contests that but if you're new, take a picture of your blind box. So you, when you get home and you get those developed, then you can look at your scores and you can say, oh, yeah, maybe this is why I was scored that way. Oh, well, I got a seven. So yeah, we, we do compare. And we did that a lot at first. If you take the pictures, uh, I think it helped improve our blind boxes. That's what we want, We're closest to the turn in. That's what we want. If you have any choice, you want to be as close to turn in as you can. If it's just the two of you, like it is with us most most times, he's bringing the meat in, I build the box, and then I've got to run it up to turn it in. On Kansas City, our daughter's going with us, and she's cooked with us before, but especially I need her this time because turn in will be a long, a long way away. I like to go up on Thursday. The earlier on Thursday, the better for me. Uh, you get to mingle with people. Uh, I get to take my time setting up and stuff, so uh, you get, because when it comes cooking time, I, I've gotten serious and I don't do a lot of visiting after I start cooking. We're ready to go to Kansas City. Okay, okay Wayne. Mr. Jones. I'd yeah. say the thing that got us to competing about two, three years ago, my father-in-law gave me a smoker, an electric smoker for Christmas. I started getting good at it. People said that it, they liked the taste of it. And I see the American World Barbecue Contest on the news, 
every year. And I always wanted to go down there. And this year, we decided, you know, what the heck, our work schedule, we can go. Check that out. So, uh, North Woods Mosquitoes. That's, That's what we, we decide yeah, on. That. We decide we on that one. Yeah, that one sounds okay. good. So we'll we came up with our name at first because we used mesquite wood right. to barbecue with, right? And Northwoods being the Northland, we're up in the Northland. And area. we're in the Northland here, north part of Kansas City. So, Northwoods Mosquitoes. Come here. You get chips out. Yep. I made it up last night. You got a spoon? I tweaked it a little bit from the regular to that. That is good. That yeah, we practice quite a bit. Got a good bite here at the end. I would say just a month ago, brisket wasn't good and chicken wasn't good. And we've cooked, we've cooked chicken and brisket once a week, every week for the last six weeks. And I think we finally got it nailed. Scott wants to win. I just want to live through it. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I think our realistic goal the first time would be to finish in the top 50. But Lee Trevino once said that everybody puts their pants on the same way every day. So. Got as good a shot as anybody else I going out win. there. I want to win. What, why not? You know, I think the, the key to us winning versus some of the other people that have been in it a long time is not cooking the meat, it's the presentation. So that's what I'm most worried about, is making sure that we make it pretty and we abide by the rules. When you first get into this, if you want to compete, it's expensive. I would say the cost so far for getting into this would be about 2,500, three grand. My wife's over there going, Let's take it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, you got two smokers, a trailer and entry fee and a cot and a tent. A lot of incidentals to uh, you're gonna the, hit the first The meat time. to practice with. Uh, but going forward, it's pretty much just the meat. You know, so our initial investment has been made. And it being local cuts a lot of it out too. I'm thinking about the judges. I'm hoping we have uh, certified judges. Uh, Hoping I end up on the right table. The weather gonna change on me in the middle of the night while I'm cooking. I have a certain time I put everything on and I, a certain time I like to take things off. And okay. if, uh, if the weather changes, it can, it can change your timing. So weather plays a big part in it. And, and how it cooks, especially humidity. I'll try to watch that close when I'm first there, so see if I have to adjust my my time to put on. At 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to drive to the meat market to get our meat. How you doing? I'm Scott Jones. I've got an order. And we've got three slabs of spare ribs, uh, two pork butts, one untrimmed brisket. Uh, six leg quarter or twelve leg quarters for chicken. Perfect. And we're gonna go down and check in at eleven o'clock in the morning, and we're gonna set up. Never set up our tent. Never set up our awning. You know, do we're gonna do all that and get checked in. I'd like to just set it up across the front right there. How deep do you want to go? Do you want so we've got a, quite a bit of open space? So you want to set it right across here? Wayne tried talking me out of buying this. He's going to thank me Thursday when it's pouring down rain. We're sitting underneath it. Put the pipes in it, and you put the tarp on, hook it around. Okay. Short. No, that's the way it's supposed to fit. We got a wrong pole somewhere. First off, we need these pieces. I'd say we need to, we should have put it on, set it up at home first. That's, that's probably where we're at here. Is, you know, this is the first time and we're doing it in front of uh, guests. And it's kind of a difficult place to learn. But we got it down now. Where are our property lines? I, t I pointed to them, I thought. Oh, right here is the first one. This is the first one. 
Okay. Do How you, you telling me to park? Do you want to you wanna unhook the cooker? And then oh. back in so we can pull out at the end? How far back can we go? You go all the way back to that tent. Stop! When you get your spot, you, uh, you set out to see where your water is, how far you got to run for electricity, and then you start setting up. Uh, if you got a tent, get your tent set up and, and uh, get your tables out and uh, get your meat inspected and uh, go to work. You can get by with, uh, if you wanted to, $5 worth of chicken. I usually buy about $10 worth of chicken. Whatever you're cooking, cook what you like, what you are best at cooking. If you're not good at cooking breast, because that's a trick, cooking breast. And uh, if I'm doing competition, I'm not going to turn in breast. I've tried that a couple times. And it didn't work well for me. And then I like to cook six slabs of ribs, which I could probably get away with two, maybe three, if I wanted to. But I like I like the selection and and butts. I always cook four. I don't know why. Uh, Really, two, one would probably be sufficient for no more meat you put in there, but I cook four. Oh, that was pretty good. Well, pick out what you want. That's your biggest cost is brisket. Uh, I'll always cook two. It's very seldom they're both good, same flavor. So I want the flavor to choose from. It's hard to get the same flavor out of a brisket. You can actually go out on the and compete in Kansas City and your meat bill will be less than $100. Welcome, cooks, to the 24th Annual American Royal Barbecue Open Competition. For this contest, pork ribs will include spare ribs and baby or loinback ribs. Cornish game hens are allowed in the chicken category. They're the same as chickens, just smaller, same genus and species. We define pork as Boston butt, picnic or full shoulder, any of those weighing approximately five pounds or more are allowed. Brisket may be either whole or the flat portion. Our health department requires that the following meat holding conditions be maintained. All meats must be on ice or refrigeration at 40 degrees or below until the cooking time. Once they've been Cooked, they must be maintained at a temperature of 140 degrees or above until they are served or sent in to the uh, judges. Garnish is limited to chopped, whole, sliced or shredded leaves of green lettuce, flat or curly parsley, and or cilantro. As usual, there are no toothpicks, skewers, foil, or foreign materials allowed in the container. There's no sculpting or painting, there's no pooling or puddling of sauce, and no sauce cups. When you're preparing your boxes, take a little extra care to make sure that your contestant number will be on the top when you close the lid. As in the past, you will have a 10 minute window for your turn-ins, from five minutes before the allotted time to five minutes after the allotted time. Please don't push this. For those of you that have not experienced a KCBS judging before, it's a blind judging system. The numbers that you send in will not necessarily be those that end up at the table. Turn-in times. Chicken, 12.30 p.m. Ribs, 1. Pork, 1.30. Brisket, 2. All right, unless there's other questions, good luck, y'all, and have fun. How you doing, guys? Good, how about yourself? Good. Jack Gibbs, Kansas City Barbecue Society, also one of your contestant hosts. Hey, Jack, nice to you. Had you had your meat inspected really? yet? No, my briskets are not here yet. Okay, so you're waiting on your briskets. Yeah. Two reasons for inspecting the meat. Number one is to make sure that it's not contaminated or tainted in any way, make sure it's fresh, and most all of it's in cryovac or some type of packaging. And number two, make sure everything is not prepared in advance, but prepared right here on site. That's good, Jim. Okay. Thanks, appreciate you bet. it. As soon as I get my meat inspected, I work on brisket first. New teams out there that are trying to reach the pinnacle, trying to win that first grand championship, trying to win that first world championship, I would suggest if they cook a contest, walk around, talk to the other competitors. You better believe if somebody comes up to me, and I've done it when I was green, 
If somebody comes up to me and asks me a question, I'm going to tell them and I'm going to tell them the truth. And I'm going to tell them how we do it and the spices that we use and, uh, and, uh, and what I've learned over the years. You can pick up a lot of information that way and that is the quickest way to the top. Barbecue rubs, I feel, are the most essential part to a great barbecue, whether it's, a, whether it's your backyard barbecue, your competition barbecue, or your restaurant barbecue. Great barbecue begins and ends with the rubs. As you can see, we, we mark our stuff because each one is definitely different. You know, the, each rub is definitely different. We don't want to get it mixed up. We want to use the right thing on the right thing because that's what, that's what we've been successful doing. Now this rub here, I'm gonna wrap this in like saran wrap. In a, in a couple hours, it'll be all red liquid. It'll actually marinate. So, that, so when we're really, that's one of the secrets of this rub. It does a really good job. The most important thing to start out with rubs is you need, you need lots of salt and lots of sugar. The one advice I would give anyone on how to put together a rub is if you're going to be cooking at a high temperature, you don't want as much sugar in your rub. If you're cooking at a low temperature, like you would your briskets and pork shoulders, I put equal amounts of, of sugar and salt in there. Um, you get that in those low temperatures, all that sugar caramelized, that's how you get that nice, dark, almost black crust crust on that stuff. Um, you start cooking ribs or chickens at 275 plus, you're going to want to tone the, tone the sugars down because they'll burn a little too quick at those higher temperatures. So a good rub is important. I think, it, I, think it's, I think it's important to have fun with rubs. You've got to have salt and sugar. You've got to have your aromatics. You've got to have lots of garlic, lots of, um, lots of onion in them. Um, and then from there, you've got to have chili powder, paprika, um, a little bit of citrus is good, whether it's Worcestershire powder. I use lemon peel in a lot of my rubs just for a little bit of a, of a citrus tank. So a good rub is, is real important to have. So that's what that dry rub does. Dry rub turns, you know, nice and wet and it's marinating and then that's how it's getting into the pores of the meat now. So it, uh, isn't it nice? You see a lot of pepper in that, huh? What I'm doing here is this piece across here, it uh, make it pull hard, so I trim it off. And I don't want it to make them think it's tough. Now, and then trying to, I'm gonna trim it to try to make it uh, uh, cook evenly. I want it try to, I want, I want it to get done at the same time. And uh, so, even though that's good meat right there, I'll end up trimming that off. Barbecue is a passionate subject. Uh, people, uh, they come to a competition, they think that they can compete as well. They uh, maybe are lucky enough to win a ribbon and they're hooked. But the, the strongest part is the camaraderie. Barbecue is all about food, friends, and fun. So these people travel all over the country, cooking, playing. Um, they're, they're, they have judge friends, other competition team friends, and they have perfected the cooking of barbecue into an art form. It's a sport, it's an art form, and it's a cuisine. When people are coming out and getting in competition, we explain to them that they don't have to have all this high dollar stuff to come out and do it. They can come out with uh, the bullet smokers, the Weber grills, stuff like that. Start out small, come out and meet the people, enjoy it, see if they like doing it before they start spending a lot of money into it. These run about $179 a piece. So, you know, you buy two of them, and go to Sam's and get you the 170. You know, for about 500 hours, you can be, you can be into it and doing it. And uh, I mean, you don't have to be ashamed to bow your head if you're using them because you'll see them everywhere. I mean, when you go to competition, you see bullets everywhere. Cookers that can maintain a consistent temperature where you don't have spikes where it gets real hot or the temperature goes real low. You want something that'll run at a steady flow and maybe fluctuate 10 or 15 degrees at the most. You don't want something fluctuating 50 or 100 degrees like a lot of these cookers do. You want to find something that you can maintain a consistent temperature to where you can cook it at a consistency where it doesn't dry it out or it doesn't cause problems where you, you, know, you get overdone or you don't get it done enough. You need to be able to be consistent with your cooking times day in, day out. It, it doesn't matter if you, you cook on a, a $20,000 pit or you cook on a $100 barrel. If you know how that cooker works, then you can cook with it. You can compete anywhere.
than mine. Everywhere you can get someone to give you advice. Every team out here has a bone they're throwing you. You just have to be wise enough to listen, not say I know it all, because I learn something every time I cook. And every time I talk to another team, I learn something, even though I've done it all. I've been to the top of the mountain, and now I'm down here, and I still learn something from everyone that I talk to that's a competition barbecue. So my advice to you would be to use it as a mentoring program. Talk to these other teams. Find out what they're doing. They're going to be generous with the information they give you and take what's right and make sense. What's what makes common sense and use it. What you don't like, don't use it. But everyone, regardless of how good of a cook they are, typically has something you'll pick up and say, you know what? I learned something from that guy and I can take this. You might have talked for 30 minutes and only used one little piece of it for that one little piece of it. You made a friend and then you also got a piece of a little nugget that you can use later on. The style of uh, charcoal that you use, the different woods that you use, the woods give it a different flavor uh, depending on what you use. Uh, I like using all fruit woods, that's basically what I use, all fruit, apple, cherry, a little pecan now and then, depends on like chicken, I use pecan on chicken, but uh, it's basically a mix of cherry and apple wood is what I use. It's what I prefer, it's what I like. If you're gonna cook 20 hours, I don't think you can cook with all wood. I've always burned a lot of charcoal in all the cookers I do. I don't know why I did it. I, it just it worked from the start. So we burn charcoal as our main fuel source, and I think it is something that backyard cooks and beginning competition cooks make the mistake of over smoking their food. Barbecue is is the right combination of the rub, the smoke, and all that. But over smoked food can be can be dangerous. Smoke like that is just about the ideal. When it looks like a steam train, you're putting too much smoke on the on the meat. Um, if you if you burn green wood, if you burn too much wood, that wood will impart a, I call it creosote. It's a bitter taste on your tongue and you don't want to do that. So over smoking is probably one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of other cooks do. So when I say I'm cooking my briskets for 20 hours, I've got a lot of wood in the cooker, but I use, I use small chunks of wood, a few logs here or there, and I use very mild woods when I'm cooking that long. I don't use any hickory wood. Now there's, there's guys who can whip my butt every week in a competition now who use nothing but hickory. But hickory didn't fit my style of cooking. We use a lot of oak wood, we use a lot of apple wood, and a lot of cherry wood when we cook, which are milder, and a lot, and a lot of pecan wood. So those milder woods fit more towards my style of cooking the briskets for 20 hours. That's what I'm starting a fire with. And this is a premium charcoal that I buy at a charcoal store out of Memphis. Uh, it's like uh, 650 a bag. Then I've got a little wood I'll use. Oh, that's that's hickory. Just adds uh, to the to the flavor of the meat. I think I don't think charcoal quite does it for me. Cooking in different regions is uh, you have to take that in consideration. Uh, normally, people from dif different regions grew up eating different kinds of barbecue. Your vinegar sauces in your Carolinas and your uh, sweet uh, tomato base in Memphis. Uh, your a uh, little bit uh, spicier peppers and onions out in Texas and your chili powders in Kansas City. You really have to take everything in consideration. Who is judging your product? Where are you competing? And you have to change your product accordingly. Now I'm going to go through that. Now I'm finally through the skin. Now I would not be ashamed to serve anything we sent in to anybody. And that's what you have to look at. What do you think of it? You may not hit a just hot button. It may be too sweet. It may be too uh, spicy. You don't know. So uh, what do you personally think? How do you feel about it? And, and that's a lot, of, at least for me. I don't worry about it. I don't cook for judges. I cook for myself and my team and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, I love to win, but I'm not all upset when I lose. The best advice I could give a new team is uh, leave the beer alone till after the contest. Uh, uh, I've been working, I, I was cooking on Memphis in May and now Kansas City and I used to sit around watching when I was cooking a hog 
and uh, I'd count the people that I was going to beat. And one night there was some guy hanging with me, and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting here counting the people I know that I'm going to beat. And he says, you're kind of cocky, aren't you? I said, no, look at him. His fire's out. He, he just lost two hours if he gets it started back. Uh, and uh, one time it was raining, and uh, the rain was sitting there beating on that cooker, just putting, c killing the fire on it. And, and I counted him, you know. I said, I got him beat. And uh, because they were drinking. And I'm sitting up there laughing at them. And I think that's what happens to a lot of your new teams. They're there and they're having a good time. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody thought somebody else was watching the fire and they're not. But if you're going to be serious about it, I mean, you can have fun. Hopefully. I won't have to put any more on for two and a half hours or so. I can go lay down or go visit. Or I'll stick around and watch the fire for a few minutes and make sure it doesn't get out of control. Then what I'm going to do is damper it down. That way I won't have to tend to the fire for a while. Yeah. Barbecue is about cooking. It's about a pit and staying with it and smelling it and and experiencing it. That's what barbecue is all about. Now this is called a point, and that's your flat. So I always put my point, that's the thick piece, up against where the fire is coming in. I like to be able to choose what, and we'll taste them both before we turn in and decide, get in and decide which one we like the best. And I always start with the fat side up. I want the fat dripping down on that on that meat. I was too serious, you know, when I first got into it. Um, uh, for me, it was all about beating anybody and everybody that came before me. And um, in the process, um, you go away frustrated. Um, you're not fun to be around family. Family don't want to be around you, especially your wife don't want to be around you. Um, and ultimately, you have that day of reckoning with yourself. You know, when you when one does come to grips with, uh, why am I really doing this? And ultimately, it was to really have fun. So, if there was a mistake that I made when I first got into the competitive world of barbecue, it was taking myself uh, too seriously and uh, trying to be. Uh, overly competitive is something that I have no control over. So uh, if, I'd have, if I had to do it all over again, if I came in day one with the objective of having fun, I would probably be much further down the road than I am now. And I'm looking for leaves that are going to be pretty in the box. I don't want too much brown on the top or anything. This is going to make them nice and flat when I build the box. Because when I'm building them, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, I'll uh, find some really nice pieces and probably go ahead and make my chicken box, which is the first turn in. And I'll probably go ahead and make that tonight. But sometimes I'm cutting right in through here if it, if it looks like I'm going to be able to, you know, if, if that's really bent. I want it to lay nice in the box. So sometimes I'll have to cut up through here. Anyway, by the time I'm through wrapping up pretty much a whole head, then this will be this will be pretty wet, that paper towel. And I'll slide it back in the bag that it came out of. And I'll keep that in the refrigerator until I'm ready to build all my boxes. But this way I know I've got all good pieces and I can do it quicker. Brown, I don't want any brown tips because that won't look good in my box when I'm laying it out and making my box. If you can see that brown stuff, that's not going to give me a very nice score. But the reason I choose some of these nice pretty ones is that it'll lay in the, it'll lay in the box so nicely. See, I, I won't use that. I don't want that brown spot. I don't want that anything to take away from the meat that's going to be placed right in the middle of this. So I'm going to see what pieces look best.
Well, oh, that's got a line on it. I may not use that. That's a nice piece. That looks better in the corner. I'll get it just like I want it. I've got my parsley ready. And that might look nice just in the corner. Okay. And this just keeps it nice and crisp. And I can put this in the, then it's got your number. You gotta make sure your number's on the top. They have, they have the right to flip it over if your number's not on top. And then I, set, I put these then in the refrigerator ready for ready for uh, my meat that he brings in to me. We enjoy it, the wife and I, we, we, we meet so many fabulous people around the country and have a lot of good friends. Uh, a lot of people think barbecue is strictly a redneck type person out there, but there's all white, uh, walks of life of people cooking it, doctors, lawyers, business people, the blue collar workers doing it. And it, it, it gets a bad name of being a bunch of beer drinkers or rowdy and stuff like that. And it's really not because we compete for money. And you've got to have a level head and you've got to be serious. But we pay, we, we got a lot of expenses, the entry fees, the meat, the expense to get into the cook off. So you, you've got to be a level head. And, uh, and it's, a, it's sort of like a fraternity organization. We see a lot of the same people around the country. We'll stay up and do some serious barbecuing. No, we don't, we don't go to sleep. We might doze off a little bit. If I'm sitting in the chair and I am kind of tired, I set the alarm for every 30 minutes at the most and I'm back up again. Don't be afraid to That's ask right. for help. If you're a newbie, don't be afraid. When you get to the contest, I don't know of anybody that's not willing to help. You got more flavor the way you're going, a lot more flavor. Then, if you slice that, if you slice that and when you go to put it in that box and it sticks back together after you slice it and that judge picks it up and you only got six pieces sliced, he's not, he's to put it on his plate. There's gonna be a judge without, without something to eat and you get a, you, you get a one. You get a one for that. So that's something you have to be careful with. Okay. All right. But uh, thank you very much for your tips. I appreciate it. But you got to make sure you got six pieces. I try to put seven always. If you run out of anything, people will be glad to give it to you or give you hints. Even these guys have been cooking longer than Larry. They'll still all stand around and talk. And you know, I've tried something new. And, and, and they all still help each other. About seven o'clock this morning, it started pouring down rain. I had to come in here and hold this up. It, it had a big old pool of water in it, so I had to hold that up. I had to scoot everything back in. The rain was blowing, so, the wind was blowing so hard, it got about half underneath the tent soaking wet. So uh, I had to move everything in, but it looks pretty good now. It's gonna dry out and the sun's ready to shine. The meat's on. We, we started the meat up last night at about, uh, I don't know, it was probably 2 a.m. And uh, the, uh, the temperature was running about 200 degrees, which is where we like to uh, cook at and went to bed, woke up at about 7.30 and the temperature had dropped a little bit. So we threw some logs on the fire and we were trying to get it up and I was trying to get it to about 225 to compensate for some of the uh, time we'd lost for the temperature getting down. And uh, it was about at 2.30 and two minutes later, he tells me, uh, oh my God, you're at 350. And I looked over and lifted up and we had a grease fire going on in the smoker and we had just flames shooting everywhere and now our brisket's beef jerky. <laughs> so we're gonna shave some of that off and hopefully there's a tender part in the middle somewhere and we can, we can use that to give the judges. Otherwise, uh, we're in trouble because that's the only brisket we had on there. It's just sort of like playing, uh, playing a sport. You can go watch it all day long until you do it. Uh, you know, you, you can't, you're not gonna be successful to do it out there. Playing baseball is one thing. Watching baseball and playing baseball, or, or golf. I mean, golf's an individual sport, so you can watch golf all you want to, but hitting that little ball straight down the fairway is kind of difficult sometimes. <laughs> it looks simple, right there. And that's the same way with cooking. The more you cook, the better you're going to be. In 1993 alone, we won 10 grand championships. We were with American Royal Open grand champions. 
Uh, we were the Kansas City Barbecue Society Team of the Year that year, but we cooked 25 cook-offs that year. We were out every weekend and, and having a good time. In the subsequent years, we would cook only maybe 10 or 12 cook-offs, and about the time we stopped doing more than five, we ceased to be very competitive. I see a lot of people out there on the internet trying to analyze it to death and ask a thousand questions and just do it and keep notes and start experimenting and figure out the answers for yourself. And the internet's, you know, it's like mining for gold. There's a lot of dirt to get a few nuggets of gold out of there. <laughs> so we sprinkled it with our rub and now we're going to go put it on the grill. The big thing with chicken is, well first you've got to get it cooked, but then you've got to get the chicken edible, the skin edible. And the two ways to get the skin edible is you can either smoke it until it gets really tender, or you can put it on the grill and get it hot and crisp it up. But a lot of beginners make the mistake of not making sure that the judges can bite easily through the skin. And one of the things you'll see a lot of people doing is spraying apple juice on, and that not only uh, you know gives you a nice sweet coating, it seals the moisture in. What I try to do with the apple juice is I try and let the let the product develop a little bit of a crust. So it takes three or four or five hours for the briskets or pork to develop a crust. If you start spraying apple juice on too soon, it hits the rub and the rub starts running off and it's a it's a gooey mess. So you wait until a crust develops on your brisket and pork and then you start spraying it with apple juice about every hour. We just crank the heat up just to finish it off. Hello, Daddy. The biggest thing isn't time. The biggest thing is Hello. if you put a toothpick or my yes. thermometer in here and you stick it between the bones, when it goes through like it's going through warm butter, then they're cooked. And a lot of people, one of the biggest mistakes they make when they start cooking is, how long does this take? Because they're used to recipes with 350 degrees for an hour and a half or something like that. And with barbecue, every animal is different, so the meat's different, you're cooking low and slow, you know, low temperatures around 225 to 275 degrees, and it's more important when the meat's done by the based on tenderness than how long it took to get there. I go by how much they bend. If they bend quite a bit, this one's not quite done, but if they bend and the meat splits like that, that's how I know that it's done. Let's go ahead and lift this up now. You're ready to pull your tray. Pull it, pull it, flip them off. Yeah, flip them over onto the tray. Beautiful. You are one chicken cooking guy from England, I'm telling you. One of the other bits of advice that I would give anyone who's either in competition or thinking about getting in competition, I keep very strict logs. I know, I know what cuts of meat I bought. I know, I know what size they were. I know how long I cooked them. I know what rub I put on them. And if you want to improve your food, you have to be real careful that you only change, you change very few variables at a time. Um, let's say we're used to cooking our ribs at 275 and we're going to change that to 300 degrees or 250 it doesn't matter and yet we also changed the marinade or we changed the rub and we changed how we presented them you've got to only change one variable at a time because what I've found is if I change four or five variables for an entry and I like it and it does well I will tend to think that the variable that I thought was the smartest choice was the one that actually made the difference, whereas I don't think you can say, if you changed five variables, which one was the one that got you to where you were. So you get started at a certain base point, you keep really good records, and then you change little things here or there, and then you wait and see how you do. Matter of fact, I don't believe I've ever turned in the same rib recipe at any of these competitions. I'll always change my ribs minutely. I haven't found that flavor that just says, there it is. Shoulder's ready to come off. Now our pork shoulder, uh, I don't guess I've changed that recipe in about four to four and a half years. We're shooting for about 190, 195 degrees internal temperature on our pork shoulder when it's ready to come off. I would say this one's ready, 195 degrees, Doc. We've been very, very, very successful with that recipe. And until uh, we start getting beat in that category, uh, we will stay consistent. That's, that's a pretty smoke ring right there. That's, that's better than a quarter inch deep. I've done a good job with getting the smoke in there. That's going to look good in a box right there. So I was pleased with my smoke ring today. I was pleased with the taste of the brisket. Now all i got to do is please those uh, judges. I think barbecuing is universally popular because it's a social outdoor event. 
people like to get out of the kitchen, out into the garden, with the family, with all with friends and all the children running about. It's a great social event. When the table captain opens up the box, you want the judges to, to be thinking, oh, that's going to taste good, because they're going to score a little higher. And the lettuce gives a little color contrast, and if there's a little grease in the bottom, it kind of hides it. Texas, they just use a piece of foil, it does the same thing. When you're dealing with the level of this cook-off, all the attention to detail you can put to it. What do you think? Good. All right, now, get that parsley. You gotta get you know, the detail. I like the color, but it's using no meat on it. There's meat. That's a last resort. I do blind boxes, and that's placing the meat in and arranging the lettuce and the parsley. Okay, I gotta make sure I can see these pieces. One, two, three, four, five. And you have to have six identifiable pieces in every box, and we try to give more. His is the biggest job, though. That's the cooking. No, it, it's, it's really part of a team thing. She sometimes says that, but. Hey, let me catch you. No sauce. I want you didn't taste smoke. One part fails, it all fails. Uh, it makes a good team is, is when you don't have to tell each other what to do. We try to plan it out so that we know what we're each going to do. And remind, like you said, remind each other. Go chicken! Go chicken! We've gotten to the point now where it comes automatically, pretty much. When does it need to be in the tray? It needs to be in the tray in five minutes. Okay. Ooh, they are. They're just peeling oh, off. Oh, man, look at them. Man, we nailed it. Okay. You gonna use the less, the, the medium ones then? Yeah. How about this end one? Got some more lettuce on? <laughs> Wanna just tuck it in on the side? No, we need some parsley, hon. I'm gonna go ahead and baste them a little bit. Okay. Take that one out, Wayne. Which one? This one here? Yeah. There we go. Do you think that looks better? County parsley, please? I think that one looks too fatty. I could tell you a few tricks that I use week in and week out, but if you don't have the groundwork done, they're not going to help you. So just show up and start competing, and, and before you know it, and judging. Judging helps a lot too. But you, you'll make friends and you'll learn a lot, and you'll, you'll see that there are a lot of, we'll all give you probably 70% of the information real easy. You'll learn all that right away. And then you got a base to work from. If you're, you're going to have to have some talent as well, but just jump on in. Come on out. We're happy to see you. You want to peek? You got it? Yeah, bye. It was a lot farther than I thought it was. So it got me a little, had me a little nervous. Any place is fine, thank you. Because I thought it wouldn't take as long to get down here. Any, anybody that wants to start into this sport, you know, I just just come to a find, find you a, a, a bull sheet. Uh, which is through Kansas City Barbecue Society or uh, uh, the uh, IBCA out of Texas or Memphis in May uh, and, and find a contest and go to it and just tell the people when you get there that, you know, hey, I, I want to see what this is all about. You won't be turned away. I do solemnly swear to objectively and subjectively evaluate. The first thing you have to do if you want to get into competition 
is you have to get out, and I, my advice would be to learn, is, is would be to become a judge. I think it's the best way to taste other people's food and have some idea what everyone else is cooking. You're on your own, you're right back. I think if um, a team starting out, if they were to ask me, uh, you know, what should I do to prepare for our competition, uh, I think there's a lot of different things you should do. I think first, um, uh, what I would do, I'd go to a judging school. I think it's important that the teams understand uh, what they're being evaluated on, uh, what the judges look for, uh, some of the biases that we, we um, uh, tend to use in, in determining a winner over uh, one product over another. Uh, but I, I would spend the time to go to a, a judging class. The first things that they teach you at the seminar is really what it is you're looking for in the product and how to score that. And then after that comes all the, the history of barbecue and the regional differences and, and all the things that you learn as you're judging. And really your judging education takes part more at judging contests than just going through a seminar. Uh, if you go through a seminar and you judge once a year, you're probably not adding a lot to it. Uh, you really need to get out and you need to do a lot of contests. A good judge is, uh, first of all, knowledgeable about barbecue and knowledgeable about different kinds of barbecue and then being open-minded as to, to different tastes. Uh, I don't think you're a good judge if you say, uh, I like my chicken just in a certain way and it has to be just a certain taste and it can only be sweet. I think you have to like everything. Uh, what you're doing is you're, you're the cook is putting his best foot forward, his or her, and, uh, and it may be a situation where, uh, where they have a product and it's a, got a little heat to it. And then your job then is to say, okay, well, I may not like hot food, but what kind of heat was this? Was it, a, was it a really good one? Did it dissipate quickly? Did it leave me grabbing for water and falling on the floor? That's not too good. Um, or if you get a sweet rib or something and you say, well, it's a little sweet for me, but I see what the cook is doing. I, I think open-mindedness to all the different things you're going to taste. You can't just center in on, this is what I like, and so that's the only thing that's any good. KCBS is all blind judging. It's simply um, um, blind is that the meat arrives in a box and you judge it not knowing who the team is. Everything in Kansas City Barbecue Society starts at a nine. So as soon as the entry comes in and it's on the table, it's a nine. And you, you judge uh, different criteria, appearance, taste, and tenderness. And you go from, if it's, if it's perfect and really good, it stays a nine. If there's something wrong with it, you might go to an eight or a seven or a six. Uh, it depends on, 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 your, on what you judge it at. But everything starts out perfect, the best barbecue that there is. It should look like, you, it should look like something you really want to eat. If I see a box of ribs, I, I want to look at it and say, hey, I want to taste one of those ribs. And, and, and that is the, that's the first thing. It, you, you look to see uh, you know, how they use the garnish. Uh, you know, sometimes it's loaded up so much you can barely see a rib poking out or a piece of chicken. Others, it's really done nicely. They put it in there. It's laid in nicely. They've, uh, you know, they've, the chicken is glazed and it looks beautiful in there. And, and a lot of times it really says, boy, I'll tell you what, I won't. I want to have a piece of that chicken. Now, that doesn't necessarily always mean that that chicken's good. <laughs> but on appearance, probably a nine for that. That's what you'd look for. When you get into the taste and tenderness, that's, that's where the individual judge is. And, and that's where I'm saying you've got to stay open-minded. Uh, uh, taste is just that. How, how does it taste? Is it, 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 did, the, did the cook really put his best foot forward. Was it, was it too salty? Was it uh, too bitter? Uh, was it too tough? Um, it, you know, it's, there are certain things you look for in, in, uh, in uh, judging the different categories, and, and the judge should meet those. Um, does the, uh, does the uh, brisket fall apart when you're trying to take it out of, the, out of the box? That's not good. When you try to pull it apart, does it take two men and a small boy to pull apart? That's not good. Uh, it should be tender, you know, and then you, you, that's what you look for. Uh, teams uh, want fairness. Uh, they know they're not going to always have the best product. Uh, every team's going to have good days and bad days, but I think they want consistency. I think that's the, the criteria that the societies want to see, that there's consistent judging uh, throughout uh, the whole process and fairness to the teams. 
that when a judge sits down to sample uh, their product that there's consistency, uh, consistency throughout the whole process. I think people who get, who get into the competitive part of it, um, they're not only interested in putting out um, an excellent product, but all the things that go along with judging. It's, um, it's a business, it's, it's very competitive, it's very expensive for a team to produce a product, but uh, it's a lot of fun too. I think the relationship with people, the meat is what gets you there, but the, uh, once you get there and the camaraderie with uh, people that you see from all different walks of life, uh, uh, all different type of uh, backgrounds is, is of interest to people. It's just fun. We need to figure whether we want to do a frontal or backwards, right? Waiting fun? Uh, well, it gives you an opportunity to get packed up. Like that. Back to back. That was as hard as this whole damn contest. Oops. We'll be a little more prepared for the next one. And we'll have a little better understanding of what we need to do. And, uh, you know, preparation's a lot of it. But uh, then there's a lot of stuff we did that was impromptu that was a lot of fun, too. So, we're learning. I'm barely. Barely standing. Out of 85, that was rough. How many are today? Uh, last I heard, about 450. Barbecuing for competition is a sport. And if you're going to be just like any other athlete, if you want to be a world champion, it takes practice and it requires that you dedicate a lot of time to that event. But there's always these little contests out there that you get your feet wet, that there's not a lot of money involved. You don't win a lot of money, but man, the experience that you're going to get when you're there is what it's all about. It ain't that money, you know. It, and I see, I see people all the time that are just thrilled to death over a ribbon, you know. Get that first ribbon. They get that first ribbon, or they get that first $10, $15 check, then they're hooked, you know, they're hooked. Fourth place in the pork category goes to BS Smokers. I like winning. I started out winning and, you know, after 16 weeks I won my first qualifier and since then it's just going out and winning bigger qualifiers and two weeks ago we won the Nebraska State Championship and that was 70 teams we had to beat to win that including PDT, which is the KCBS Team of the Year for 2002. So, you know, doing things like that is just too much fun. He always says when you don't win, it's a long way home. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you, it's like anything. You, get, you just kind of get tired right then, but... But if you win, you know, it, your energy level goes up and Number eight this year, you don't care if you ever Aaron get home. <laughs> It's also almost like a lottery because you're dealing with a lot of good teams and you just you have to have everything going your way that day. I mean the, the weather is it's not been a real big factor. It's been cold but everybody expected that. A little bit of rain everybody expects that at the Royal. And but it's just how'd your stuff do? Did you get the right draw and did you get the right meat? Um, and just did everything go you know hopefully you didn't party too hardy the night before and wa didn't watch your temperatures or hopefully you just you know stayed up watched your temperatures you know, you just, you get a good box, you get a good slice, you get the right piece of meat with the right flavor, and, and you get the right judging table to where they just like what you did, and you add those all up, and you, you might be up there with a big trophy in your arm, you know, and if you aren't, you, you're going, well, I, I, I walked on stage, maybe, or you're just going, next year, <laughs> you know, and it's, you, you don't know, I mean, here, it, get a walk on the stage at all, you've done extremely well, you get, um, They've got a crown and a robe that looks kind of like out of a 57 movie. And there's a lot of people wanting to wear it. I mean, there's just a lot of people want to wear that thing. It might look like Ralph Cranbin special, but I would sure wish I had it. <laughs> I do wish I had it. So if Ori and Saul would like to come down to the cooker for some photos shortly, the folks in the Gorillas team would love to be there. Gorillas are the grand champions.
Pretty disappointing we didn't win. <laughs> but we got to go on the website tomorrow and see what our scores are. We knew we didn't do well in pork butt. So uh, it would be interesting to see. Our first time, we wanted to finish in the top 50. So we had a good time. We're very tired. I want to go home and take a shower. And I want to go to bed. So congratulations to the team that won. We're there, we're there next year. Probably makes you want to try it more next year. Huh? Absolutely. We're going to go to the next barbecue contest next summer. And maybe a couple little ones. Keep working on it. Did you go up there and see where we if we're in the top 48? They've got a page up there. I did. And we're not. <laughs> Are you disappointed? I'm disappointed in that. Should have been in the top 48. I had a good product today, but you gotta have luck too. You gotta you gotta be on the right table. And uh, I know the product was there, it just wasn't the right table. It's still fun. It's uh, this this barbecue community. Uh, they're a good bunch of people. I like I like being around them. Uh, when uh, when we we usually cook one in November and then we quit till about March or April and uh, usually April and I miss the people then because uh, you know they're all they're just one big family. <laughs> Bye, America. <laughs>
And Wayne's even more tired and wants to take a shower even worse. Probably need to take a shower even worse. <laughs> That's it.